Hello. In this recording, we're going to be discussing the joints of the pelvic girdle, specifically the pubic symphysis and sacroiliac joint. Let's start by reorienting ourselves to the bones of the pelvic girdle. First, we have the hip bone, or os coxae, with its ilium. And a pubis region, which is divided into a superior pubic ramus and an inferior pubic ramus. Posteriorly, we have the sacrum here. The sacrum has wings or ala. Now, the pubic region of the bones meet in the middle at the pubic symphysis, which is a secondary cartilaginous joint consisting of a fibrocartilaginous interpubic disc and some surrounding ligaments. In general, this space is wider in females. And importantly, the bone surfaces are not flat, but are actually quite roughened, which can be seen if we remove the interpubic disc. The crests and valleys of the bone surface increase with age. Only slight movements of the pubic symphysis are possible, and most movement occurs in females during late gestation and childbirth. And occasionally this movement can be quite considerable, which is just Ouch. The sacroiliac joints link the axial skeleton, which at this level is mostly the vertebral column and the entire lower body. The sacroiliac joint, therefore, is one of the most stable joints in the body and definitely one of the strongest as it has to hold the weight of the entire upper body. Pulling back out now, we can see that anteriorly a synovial joint exists between the ear-shaped auricular surfaces of the sacrum and the ilium. So let's look at those now by isolating our ilium here. And we can see this ear-shaped might be a bit of a bold term, but let's go with it, ear-shaped area. This is covered in cartilage. And we have a matching surface on the ala of our sacrum, which we can see if we return to our sacrum. And we look here. These auricular surfaces are much like the pubic symphyses in that they're highly irregular and the roughened areas essentially lock into one another, allowing for very little movement, unlike most synovial joints. And this is really a consequence of their role in transmitting the majority of the weight of the body to the hip bones. They essentially lock the pelvis in place. Abundant sacroiliac ligaments, which you don't need to know at your level, are primarily involved in transferring the weight of the upper body from the axial skeleton to the two ilia of the appendicular skeleton. In the next recording, we will look at how that weight travels further down the leg through the hip bone.